Hello, this is Haka Devine, and I am here with r slash Tumblr, as I already told you yesterday I would be. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. Right where we left off, this goat. I'm in my mid-twenties, and honestly get so much hate over being child-free, that I'm sorry to tell people that I have an adopted a daughter when they ask about my kids. I just conveniently leave out the fact that my adopted daughter is in fact a 40 pound sheep. One of roughly two a dozen that live in my backyard. It isn't even a lie. I raised that lamb on, on a bottle from the day she was born. As far as she's concerned, I'm her mom. And as long as I'm big enough, the problem of dealing with sheep is absolutely unbelievable as human toddlers. Uh, uh, parody problems. Oh uh, yeah, my daughter's too. She always puts everything in her mouth. Uh, my daughter, daughter is always is climbing on stuff. I swear she's part part man gut. I live for seeing how long I can keep even have it for someone asks to see a picture of my, my darling. Sure, I say. Here she is. Isn't she adorable? Then realize your horrified confusion when they see this I I little brown sheep like it's the best thing. It's my favorite thing I've ever done. Next to raising sheep in the first place. That's where she's far around you go. A girl funny man? And you smoke boobs? This is a turning point where none of our posts are readable to anyone else anymore. Yeah, I'm kind of confused. Having to, like, eat several times a day for energy is just poor and flawed design on God's part. I'm sorry to say it, but why I come a freaking deadline can eat sunlight, but I have to, like, physically move for sustenance. Ah, an opponent arrives. Draws my sword and turns around. Hmm, your footsteps made you sound taller. Sheets my sword and draws a second, smaller sword. <laughs> no, in, in middle school, I was, I was um, cursing even worse than these high schoolers were. In, in this post. I'm guessing these people are a little bit old. You start cursing pretty young these days. Can't guard. Stupid. Oh gosh, don't tell anyone I said that. Elementary school. What the heck? Middle school. Damn it, this is freaking dumb as hell. High school. What the fuck did you just say, you little fucking and shit bitch cunt fuck? I will beat the dicks out of your ass. <laughs> college. I should be in college, actually. Holy crap. What the frick frack snick snack are you doing? This made my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty much swearing like a college itch person. I spent my 18 years of life trying to be okay with the fact that humans fit in and out of each other's lives. No matter how I think of it, I can't make it sound romantic or poetic. To those who have already passed through my life, and to those who eventually will, I love you. I miss you. The back door will always be unlocked if you ever feel like coming home. <sighs> That's just pain. Honestly, trying to do the high school one is pain because I think hey, that might get my video age restricted or something. Because I said the C word. I had to, it was written. I didn't actually have to, but you know. It's whatever. Anyway. Sigmund Freud. Bringing his first eternal. When I was a kid, I used to climb horses' balls together and jack off, off to them. Also, I really wanted to fuck my mom. Guy! I then decided to publish Sigmund 
and for it's a private journal. Hmm, yeah, I don't think you'd mind if I published this. I literally spit out my water. Oh boy, we got that slow Wi-Fi today. I feel bad for twins that aren't equally attractive. This is me and my twin prom night. Thank you for the text post. Another year, another disappointment. Finally! I feel like their family got to settle to do the red vases. Wait, what? I wasn't paying attention. Oh my goodness, I can't! <laughs> <laughs> that took a while. I think my computer is getting slow. All right, let's go for this one. Cat girl. Oh boy, do you know what a cat girl is? This article is about the anime or manga trope for other users see cat girl do is an evaluation for motorized cat shaped ears see narrow wear. Cat boy redirects here for the musician see Boyd or Terry. A cat girl, Neko Musume. Is a femme presenting kim kimono omimi character with few feline traits, such as cat ears, nekomimi, a cat tail, or other feline characteristics on otherwise human body. Cat girls are found in various fiction genres and, in particular, Japanese anime and manga. Cat boy is a term for the masculine and equivalent of said character. Their type and cat envy is the a gender neutral o term for this character type. <laughs> we kite and a cat girl personification of Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> Was anybody going to tell me that Wikipedia has its own cat girl soda, or was I supposed to stumble upon her myself? I bet she contains so much knowledge. Knowledge. Oh no, that's perfect. Hey, look how big the sun is through this magnifying glass. Ow, ow, oh! <laughs> Man has a PhD! Yeah, attention pet <laughs> hyperactive disorder. I don't think that's the right word, but pretty much. Perry was not amused in that moment, though. Maya, I'm placing you in the microwave. Mm. Beep, 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 beep. That's too funny. All right. Judy Hoffs is a cop who leverages a stranger. <laughs> is felony tax evasion to help to get him to put his life in danger and work around the clock so she can keep her job. 
She then presumably helps him cover up his crime to get him a job on the same in police force. Judy Hobbs it has some very nice ice feet, but we need to remember that she's still a cop. Why are you talking about her feet all of a sudden? Just have for everyone out there using, tum using Tumblr on this day that you can read blog and post without the extra. A commentary by clicking the uh, piece URL on the original post. You should have called the Zootopia rabbit sexy. Political correctness. Murder First Amendment and free speech. She is a cop, and all cops are already unsexy. I'm sorry, not sorry to everyone in the. Uh, and I was just learning that Tumblr is a place for hurting furries who, who vlog about ACAP. Unfortunately, a Judy Hobbs is very sexy and also a cop, and therefore a bastard. And since that all cops are un automatically unsexy, is still attaching appearances to morality. Remembering that things can be sexy and evil, or ugly and good, is imperative. We're getting this the rails and this rails the conversation. True. Ooh, 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 good moment right there. That's some good shit right there. I don't agree because I'm. I'm just some really messed up stuff. Anyway. Places where reality is a bit altered. Any target. Churches in Texas. A bed in 7 Eleven. Your bedroom at 5 a.m. Hospitals at midnight. Warehouses that smell like dust. Lighthouses with lights that won't that don't work anymore. Empty parking lots, ponds and lakes in suburban and neighborhoods. Rooftops in the early morning. By the way, if you go to a pond and lake in a suburban neighborhood, you do not recognize the bodies. You do not recognize the bodies. Inside a dark cabinet. Playgrounds at night. Rest stops on highways. Deep in the mountains. Early in the morning. Wherever it's just snowed. Trails by the highway just out of your shop out of traffic. Schools during breaks. Those little beaches right next to fairy dogs. Bowling alleys. Unfamiliar from McDonald's on long road trips. The friend's living room once every day, but use a sleep. Laundromats at midnight. What the fuck? Your galleries and art museums are are empty except for you. The lighting section of Home Depot. Stairwells. Actually, yeah, um, that uh, galleries and art museums. The entirety of it is just that. Or it's just empty except for you. And when you meet a, a Gary, it's still that. It's just you and Gary and nobody else. Hospital waiting rooms. Airports from midnight to 7 a.m. Bathrooms and small concert venues. I just got the weirdest feeling. I swear. Okay, listen. There are reasons for this. A lot of these places are called liminal spaces. I love liminal spaces. I don't know why. Which is they are, are through ways from one space to the next. Places is like rest stops, stairwells, trains, parking lots, waiting rooms, airports. Feel weird when you're in them because their existence is not about themselves or things before and after them. They have no definite, definitive place outside of the relationship to the spaces you are coming and going for, going to. Reality feels altered here because we're not really supposed to. We'll be in them for a long time. And we're thinking about them as their own entities. And when we do, they seem odd and out of place. The other places feel weird because our brains are hard, hardwired for context. We like things to belong to a certain place and time. When we experience those things outside of the context, outside of the context, our brains have developed for them. Our brains are like, nope, shit, this isn't right. Get out, abort, abort. Schools not in session. Empty museums. Being awake while a lot of people are asleep. All these things and spaces feel weird because our brain is like, I already have a context for this space, and this is not it, so it must be dangerous. Our rational understanding can sometimes override that immediate danger or impulse, but we are still left with a feeling of weariness and unease. 
Listen, I am very passionate about liberal spaces. They are fascinating except, or perhaps I am merely a nerd. I, for one, appreciate your passion for liberal spaces and thank you for explaining it to the rest of us. I think I just lost hearing around my ears. That's fun. Oh yeah. I freaking love liminal spaces. I'm getting to the point now where it's actually weird if anyone else is awake while I'm awake. I think this is the most <laughs> wholesome meme for or or this picture right here. When you carry all the grocery bags in one trip, <sighs> my fingers. When the when the the uh, the when you. When, when you, the... <laughs> ah! This is kind of getting choked. Girl, help. I'm saying my hottest years rotting in my room. And so your teenage years, 20s, 30s, etc. here. Yeah, that's me. That's where I am. It's amazing. Any advice on girlfriends? This is advice for all. This should be advice for any partner. Figure out how to make them um, laugh and how to make them finish. Let's say. Maybe that advice isn't good for ace partners, but figure out how to make them laugh at the very least. Two, keep doing that. Three, if they're feeling like crap, try to make them feel a little, a little less like crap. If there's nothing you can do to do that, just let them be a man. Try not to be the reason they are feeling like a crap in the first place. Yeah, I'm just going to a little bit more or today. Okay, this is, that's just a gift for a meme that I haven't quite read yet. Yes, yes, I've finally done it! At long last, I bought some science jars! Science. Not only inside, science. Science! <laughs> hey guys, I wish I live on a freaking weird island and sometimes leg crabs with 8 inch claws try to get it into my house. Q Fuffy, what for you is he? Sideways. Homer, I chose to focus on Achilles dragging Hector behind his chariot in my composition of the Siege of Troy as a meditation on the horrors men commit when consumed by grief and rage. Alexander, at long last I have reenacted the, the war 
required by Achilles, Achilles. From the poem, that time Achilles said some really fucked up things and learned better. And that's really real. 97% of what Alexander learned from the Iliad was about bottoming. Homer. In my book, I invented the Achilles as a cautionary tale. Alexander. At long last, we have created the Achilles from classic sci-fi novel, Don't Create Achilles. I was starting to think that this might be the original old thing that's added here, clearly. Might be something else entirely. Like maybe something about uh, evil AI or self-thinking in, in robot or something. I don't know, though. Complicated in, in relationships with your parents are like, you cut a fruit, bring it to my room without me asking. I can't remember the last time you told me that, that you were proud of me. You told me I wasn't and good enough for you, but I'm not even good enough for myself. Your hugs feel like coming home. I, can t I can't tell you anything that happens in my life. I doubt myself every day because of something you said to me when I was eight. Would you like to hear about my day? Please don't ask me about my day. I miss you even though you're in the next room. I wish we didn't live together. I've never loved or resented anyone as much as I loved and resented you. Are you okay? Are we okay? Are we ever going to be okay? Ow. Kojima is a storyteller in the Homeric mode. Let me explain. Pretty much every part of the Iliad goes exactly like this. War is horrible and pointless. Ambition is bloody and pointless. Glory is the only immortality available to men, but glory is fundamentally incompatible with a happy life. There can't be joy without suffering because the inevitability of death is what gives life meaning. Anyways, glorious and godlike theme it is, Taylor of Horses and Killer of Men was like, fuck you, as he swung his big sword at these guys and he hit them so hard, all their blood fell out and their dicks exploded and it was awesome. It seems like a lot of sort a writer sees, honestly. That extremely hot thing middle-aged men do when the weight of the world is crushing them. <laughs> That's amazing. When I feel bad about my social skills, I remind myself how one time I, and Rockman enough decided he was going to be pals with Stravinsky, who actually mentioned he liked honey. So he showed up in the mid and his house and moved that with an enormous jar of honey and no explanation. Shared bad social skills can be a love language. Rockmanov was also six foot six, so please imagine a tall, imposing figure looming in front of your house holding a big jar of honey in the dead of night. <laughs> <laughs> the clown, after sucking me off, proceeds to pull out the multicolored rags out from my weenie while I clap in joyful glee. Hey, Sid, this is a post. I then proceed to smack the clown's ass, giving off a loud, distinct honk that's only a heard, heard, heard when clapping the ass cheek of a clown in heat. The wrong person got deactivated here. What the fuck did I just read? <laughs> okay, so today I was at the mall and this girl walked in front of me, tripped and fell. And instead of helping her up like a normal person would, I decided to make her feel less embarrassed and fall down too.
But I guess another or guy had the same idea because we fell at the same time. And then another person fell. And another. And suddenly I was laying in the middle of an impromptu uh, fainting mob. And a lot of people were shouting. And girl who had originally fallen looked so freaking happy. What? I love when the short kings at my university they jump to set the top of a door frame or sit on a counter or desk. Does that make you feel like a big boy? Did you like going uppy? Do you want to go uppy again? Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Die. It did. It did make me feel like a big boy. And I absolutely adored going uppy. We'll be going uppy again. <laughs> Old person cough. Okay. <coughs> oh yes, I remember the 2020s. I looked at my screen 90 times a day to check in with my network of tormented and electric homosexuals, SDS, URLs on do you recall websites? Well, it was a website called Tumblr. And we talked about events from our dreams and the experience of walking around and Wikipedia articles. We recently read Wikipedia was a website as well. Yes, beautiful a website. Now, can you sneak more cigarettes into this hospital or not? I'm glad that uh, the old grandma voice. It sounds awful. Hmm. <gasps> Alright, black people are sharing the unwritten rules they follow that most white people are clueless about and eye-opening. I'll be reading these even though I will I'll preface this by saying that I cannot relate to these issues as I myself am a white, white person. 1. No matter how angry you get, you try and remain calm. If you raise your voice even a little, regardless of what you say or how you say it, you're instantly labeled as an, an angry black person and dr as strongly, even when you're right. I kind of get that from being disabled and being trans. Two. My mother taught me to always ask for a bag and receipt, no matter how small to purchase, or you can be accused of stealing. 3. As a black person in a predominant white area, I make a point of, of approaching staff first and starts when I walk in. I ask in an innocuous question in a friendly tone, even if I don't need anything. They seem to feel safe around me and do not follow me around when I do that first. 4. As a black person, I usually keep my college jacket in the car. If I have to go to the emergency room, I'll receive better treatment if doctors see that I have a a higher or education. Five. I'm from Louisiana and they where they still have sundown towns. Avoid them at all costs. Even if you have to pass through at night, make sure you have a full tank of, of gas so you don't have to stop. 6. I am a black person and relatively new to my mostly white neighborhood. But this is not me, this person that, that is writing this is one uh, and who is narrating here. When I take a walk for exercise, I always walk in the middle of the street, not too close to houses on either side. I wear reflective gear and avoid staring too closely at any of the houses. I often think of Ahmed Arvory while I'm walking. 7. I was thought to be an overachiever because no one expects a black person to be smart and well-spoken. I'm not expected to have a voice in anything, and many are shocked when I do. They are astounded when I can verbalize my thoughts and opinions in multi-syllabled words. Well, then ovaries do not cancel out intelligence and reason. 8. As a black person, my father taught you and when being pulled over by the police to pull your insurance and registration out of the glove box and keep it ready on your seat. That way you do not 
I'd have to reach into the glove box when the police are at your window. Nine, never ever put your hands in your pockets while walking around a store. If you don't want to give them a reason to follow you or call the, around or call the police, your hands need to be visible at all times. Ten, as a black person, never get into an elevator with a woman alone. Always wait for the next, next one. Eleven, something I know I have to be careful of in public, as a person mixed with white and black, is remembering which parent I am with and how to act. This is called code switching. I have to make sure I act so I'm not labeled as ghetto with my mom or whitewash with my dad. 12. No matter how cold or windy it is, my hood stays off and my earbuds or headphones stay off my ears. 13. As a black person who loves hip hop, I often have answered the music I listen to so I won't be judged as a thug. 14. As a black person, there is if there is a white woman in line, you stand back far enough so you cannot touch her by mistake or be accused of touching her. This is actually really messed up. 14. As a black person, if there is a white woman in Oh, I just read that one. 15. Knowing that I'll be for all the run shopping in high end stores, I have private related questions afraid for one day and they invariably ask me if I need assistance. Replying with no thank you, I'm just browsing, makes their suspicion jump, and suddenly I have an unofficial entourage. I'm a college educated black person about to turn 40, but I still have to play these sorts of silly games. It could be very exhausting. 16. As a black person who works a swing shift and gets off work at 11 p.m., I will not take off my a badge until I get inside my garage. I need to have a layer of protection to prove I'm not up to no good in case I get pulled over. 17. When meeting with executives or high ranking officials where appropriate attire would be if this is casual for others, I must wear full business attire. I found that when I dress more formally, I receive more eye contact, head nodding, and enthusiasm during conversations. This happens consistently. 18. I work in the hospital. Anytime I get a patient out of bed and they make and they ask me to move their purse, I make sure it remains in their sight as I move it. I also hope it's a room with a camera just in case any of this obviously comes up. Nineteen. Don't wear any jewelry or sunglasses of the brand where you are shopping in the store. As a black person, I've had, had an employee grip a Gucci shades off my head, they were mine, and told me not to stretch the, the merchandise. Rude. Never let your kids play with toy guns. That's 20, by the way. 21. And finally, I find myself begging to get adequate at medical care for the autoimmune disease and pain I deal with. Pain in black folk is viewed much differently than and in white people. It blows my mind how a lot of people don't realize that black people will get this short end of the stake in health care. This was a list of things that at a group of people have to do because as of the inherent and um, prejudice that a lot of people who are white have against and people of color. Honestly, I probably should have come um, to this and seen this in February, but whatever. People like this exist no matter what time of the year it is. It's kind of messed up that uh, people have to uh, follow these dumb as hell rules and play these stupid games just because of, of the color of their skin. It's ridiculous. Anyway. 
Huge pet peeve in video games is when you can't hold your breath underwater for very long, or it takes a good while to regain your breath above water. Unrealistic, like my condolences to the devs for your lack of breath support, but that just could not be me. Are you a frog or perhaps a turtle? I am a saxophone player. Same thing. <laughs> Build my official blog. <laughs> Babe, I love it to support you, but you're unwell about this man. Alright, this is gonna have to be the last one. I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but suffering is not noble. Take the Tylenol. One time when I was younger, I was refusing to take heading medicine, and my mom said, The person who invented that medicine is probably so sad. You won't let them help you. And now, every time I find myself denying medicine, I just imagine the sad scientist with those big white eyes like, Won't you let me help? And, and whoop, then I take the medicine. Scientists when you don't take the medicine, and then they develop... A developed to help your pain. <laughs> oh my goodness. My browser sounds are a little bit delayed. Anyway. This has been r slash Tumblr. Kind of got serious all of a sudden there, didn't it? The long list of something very serious. If you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll be seeing you again tomorrow, probably. Who knows? Until I do see you again, goodbye!